All right, so today we will be talking about uh, the Town Fighter from the Panthera Point Dread Mega Construct set. Um, I don't have any of the set being built coming up on this one. Um, there was a lot of issues putting it together, which is, you'll hear about it at the end of my toy review for this one. It was a frustrating set to put together. Um, I love how it looks at the end, right? It looks really cool. You know, the oranges and the yellows and all that kind of stuff. The hawk and flight kind of motif. It looks a lot of really cool. But there was a, a lot of issues with tolerance and all that kind of, like, so, like I said, you'll hear about it at the end of the video when I start harping on about it a little bit more. Um, but that's why you're not going to see any of the parts coming together. You're just going to see a finished product and me reviewing the set. Uh, I'll probably be doing the same thing for Battle Bones and not for the same reason. I uh, did not have as many tolerance issues for Battle Bones, but mostly just due to the fact that it's a lot of little parts on Battle Bones. We'll look at the instructions, though, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, anyways, so we're going to review this set. We're going to review the Mega Constructs Battles, uh, Battle Bones set next video, which will be Friday, and then we'll be working on Castle Grayskull, and I'll actually probably build that one on camera, uh, even though it has a lot of, um, what's it called? Repeating parts, kind of like very monotonous build for some of it when you go to build the wall, a curving wall. Anyways, guys, please enjoy the video. Tom's here with his toys. He's here to share. Let's get into it. All right. Today, I'm going to do a quick look and review at the Masters of the Universe Mega Constructs Panthor at Point Dread. Now, when I go to look at the set, we're actually not going to look at this piece right here, this Point Dread. We're going to look at the Talent Fighter. We're going to look at Zodak, the Sorceress, Panthor, and Battle Armor Skeletor. All right, so as you can see, I have the Talent Fighter already built. Um, I tried to build it on camera, but there was a lot of issues, and I'll talk about that at the end of the review, um, some of the issues I actually have with this set. Uh, for now, I just want to kind of look at it and give you a little brief uh, history about some of the stuff that deals with this. So the Talent Fighter is described as a quick an agile aircraft. Uh, it is meant to hold two passengers, or two people, a passenger and a pilot. Um, and though anyone can be a passenger, it is stated that only He-Man has the strength and ability needed to pilot this thing to its full potential. In fact, it's said that only he can pilot it, um, though that doesn't really work out in the mini-comic where they show the uh, town fighter here being commandeered by Skeletor. Um, Skeletor is unable to bring out the full potential, but he does fly it. So, Anyways, um, it does seem to possess some intelligence, as He-Man can call for help from it, and it will come to him. And the place that it resides is Point Red, which is used as a landing zone for it. It's meant to resemble a bird of prey with its wings in flight. Which is why it has the red eye, the hawk, nose, sharp talons, wings spread out. Um, so it did appear, like I said, within the mini-comic. Uh, it was stolen in that. And He-Man did eventually, of course, reacquire it. But he did so after outflying the uh, the town fighter with Skeletor at the helm. Let me go ahead and just do this real quick. So It has some laser cannons at the top does have a radar dish, and the missile launchers on the side do fire. Uh, maybe. Been having issues with this one. I don't know why. So we'll switch over to this side, and as you can see, boom. This one fires fine. I don't know what the issue is with the other one. It's just not working very well. They're just pressure. The ball goes in there. The C-clip grabs it, and this pushes on the, the tail end of it. So... I don't know. Um, the figures fit in there decently. Take Zoda here. We're going to talk about the figures here in a sec um, after I go over the Talon Fighter a little bit more. Uh, I do want to show, you know, like figures just sit in here. Maybe. Supposedly. I'm trying to get his feet to go through here. And they're not the most wieldy of uh, digits. There we go. So, yeah, figures sit in there. You can fly them around. They can come back. Oof. 
shake them up. If you get them in there properly with the feet underneath the uh, the front for this guy here, it actually holds. Let me see here. Let me fight with them a little bit further. See if we can't. Can't get them to work here. Come on, feet. Oh, come on, you. Yeah, they just don't want to get in there for some reason. There we go. So yeah, once you once you fight with it enough and you get the feet in there, he doesn't really shake around too much. So doesn't close properly because his gun's in the way. So anyways, yeah, so it did appear also briefly in the Funimation cartoon. Um, and in the cartoon, it did have some special abilities and features and all that kind of stuff. But that slowly changed over time until it was just a plain old aircraft. It was originally released in 1983 as the Frontier Outpost Point Red and Flying Talon Fighter set. Um, it did have two versions. The first version was just the Point Red with Talon Fighter. And there was a variation that also included a uh, book and record so that you could put, you know, your vinyl on a record player. Yes, it was actually a vinyl. And listen to it. Uh, part A had the mini, Part A had the book, and Side B had the mini comic. So you could actually listen to it as you read. So there is a reason why Zodak actually comes with the Talon Fighter for the Mega Constructs line instead of, you know, like He-Man or something like that. And the reason is, in the point red with the record, Zodak is the character piloting the Talon Fighter in the book. So let's go ahead and talk about Zodak here real quick. Designed in 1981, Zodak's bio for his toy states that he's an evil commander. But on the show, he plays the part of a good guy. And the reason why this is, is it's a little confusing uh, for kids to understand stuff like this, but Zodak is completely neutral. He is a outside party. He's a cosmic enforcer whose job is to make sure that neither Skeletor nor He-Man ever have truly have the upper hand on one another and keep balance. So there will be times that he would help Skeletor and there will be times that he helped He-Man. Uh, much like the other toys in this line, he has some decent articulation. So let's go ahead and do that. So got like a little hinge there up and down and then you can turn it 180 same thing here these are like these are almost like full ball joints there heads on a ball joint slightly ball jointed hips rotation at the waist and a knee and you, can, you know do his kickies back and front uh really cool armor white belt and then i like the headpiece little helmet Now, I always thought as a kid that he had a beard. Let me see here. But it appears that it's actually just the bottom piece of his helmet. I don't know why I always thought he had a beard as a kid. So yeah, so Zodak is completely neutral. He's neither for He-Man nor Skeletor. In the, like I said, the cartoon, he plays the part of a good guy. On the bio of his original toy, say that he was an evil commander. In the DC Comics, he's a bumbling uh, henchman for Skeletor. And I don't know after that point. He did not appear in any of the mini comics. Um, he did appear in the book for the Talon Fighter, which is why they included him in the set. And he was also the first figure in the toy line to come with a blaster. Most everyone else had swords and staffs and stuff like that. So he was the first one to include a shooting weapon. Alright, so now let's go ahead and look at the Sorceress. I'm going to cover more on the Sorceress and Skeletor and all that kind of stuff later. I just want to briefly look at these figures. Um, we'll cover them more on Castle Grayskull. This is a white variation. She usually has more like a, almost a bird of paradise look, I guess, or a macaw. I like her staff. Her face sculpt is really nice, but the painting... Leaves a little bit to desire. As you can see, she has one huge brown pupil looking off to the side and the other one looking right at you. Um, that is, seems to be a problem with the, the Mega Constructs toys is the paint is always off for the eyes. She's got the nice cowl and the... Let me see if I can just get her to let go of the staff here. Let go. The 
cape is made so that you can spread out her arms, much like her toy, to make it look like she can fly. So the original toy would squeeze the legs and the arms would pop open. And then this is the hawk that she's supposed to be able to turn into. All white, like her costume. And last, let's go ahead and look at Battle Armor Skeletor and Panthor. So, as you can see, he can ride it. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Uh, any figure can actually ride it. But seeing as this is Skeletor's little evil kitty, we have him on there. He does not come with a power sword or his Havoc staff. Instead, he comes with this purple battle axe. Still has the skull with a hood for his face. A uh, little purple bodysuit underneath. Purple feet. And the rest of it is black. So the battle armor, much like He-Man, was made so that if you press on the drum with a weapon or your finger, you'd press on it and it would rotate, and one side would have one scratch, and then you'd hit it again and rotate to two scratches. And then you could reset it to undamaged. So it had three sides. I like the little the, the bat motif there. It's a little, as you can see, it's a little off sides. That's okay. Paint sculpt, Paint on this sculpt is fantastic on his face. And then let's go ahead and look at Panthor. So Panthor was just a repaint of Battle Cat. He was painted purple, as you can see. Everything was the same. He had the same face, same body, all that kind of stuff. He had the same little saddle. He did not come with a helmet like Battle Cat, though. And another big difference in the to original toy line is, unlike uh, Battle Cat, Panthor here was flocked, which meant he had a soft fuzz coating. So he was a purple fuzzy kitty. Just like Battle Cat, uh, he has a ball-jointed head. There is a up-and-down movement available here at the neck. Slight ball joint at the shoulder there. You can turn his little feet and move them up and down. Slight ball joint here and a slight ball joint at the tail. So you can, you know, have him rawr, at the source. Rawr, and tripping. Um, I don't remember too much about him in the cartoon and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about where Panth the Panthor, Battle Cat, and all that kind of stuff are going to be discussed will be during the Castle Grayskull review. So yeah, so there you go. So let me talk about this set overall now. So there are some problems I've had with the set. Um, and it's not a detriment to the set once it's together. Once it's together, it's fantastic, but putting it together is difficult. Um, the parts have a very low tolerance as compared to Lego, where clicking them together sometimes is a fight. And then once you get it together, to you'll have to, like, this piece slides on uh, over. Let me see here. Let's take this off. So this piece just ugh, goes on over these. And getting it on there was a pain and a half because it's a very tight fit for no good reason. Right? It means that it won't just fall off. Getting it on there, there, is a battle, right? And then it comes off a little much, it comes off easier as compared to getting it on. And then putting this piece on, um, I knocked it off a couple of times just trying to get that piece on. And then putting the red piece, so there's a tolerance issue where it's really tight. So it holds together really well once you get it together. But sometimes getting it together is just a fight and it's just no fun. Um... It is definitely meant more like to play with and display than to uh, just enjoy putting together. Uh, there's, like I said, there's an issue with this cannon here for some reason. And I might have just discovered what it is. I don't think this piece was on all the way. So I think I couldn't get the full range of motion on, that on the uh, part that fires. Let me find out. That's exactly what it was. Because, like I said, you don't... The tolerance is off, so... It felt like that piece was on there fully, but I, as I was taking this off, I had to press on that, and it, I could feel it move down further. So if I had any complaints, it would be that. It would be the fact that the tolerance for the pieces is not as nice as Lego. Um, and that's probably my only main complaint besides paint issues, like with the sorceress's face. But those are... Issues that happen on any small figure line, it's not unusual. 
Uh, the price for the set, it wasn't too bad. I got it for 20 bucks. You can pick it up from Mega Constructs website uh, for, let me look up on my notes. Yeah, so this set, um, according to my notes, is $49.99 uh, from Mega Constructs. I got it for 20 bucks. So you can find it for relatively cheap online without any problem. Um, I don't recommend, honestly, I do not recommend buying it for $50. I got it for a couple reasons. One, I wanted Zodak, I wanted Panthor, and I wanted Battle Armor Skeletor. Uh, I wasn't so hot on the plane or the sorceress, I could care less either way for both of those. But I also wanted Point Dread, which we'll see when uh, we build Castle Grayskull, to finish off the look, uh, to me at least, for Castle Grayskull. So, for 20 bucks. I felt like I was getting a pretty good deal. I do not recommend buying it for full price. Find it for cheap. Uh, it is not worth $50, this set. It's not like this set that was $25, and I wouldn't have minded paying $25 for it. It was a lot of fun to build and all that kind of stuff. The minifigures are fun. Uh, $50 for this set is ridiculous. This is, this is at most a $25 set to me. So, I don't recommend buying this set unless you really want uh, some parts of it and you can get it at a good price. It'll look cool in your collection if you're displaying it, uh, and it's the only way to get some of these figures, like Zodak here. Um, but, unless you're planning on really going in all in on this line, don't, don't purchase this set. Um... <sighs> Yeah, uh, that, that's my main complaint is the price uh, compared for the quality of what I got for the tolerance. Um, and at 20 bucks, uh, I, like I said, I, it's good at 20 bucks. At 20 bucks, this is a fantastic set. At $50, I would have been very upset for buying it. Um, anyways, so this was Panthor at Pound. At Point Dread, Panther at Pound. Panther at Point Dread. Uh, we are looking at, on Friday, we're going to look at the Battle Bones Mega Construct sets, which is actually probably, besides Castle Grayskull, my favorite set out of the ones that I own for this series. Um, Castle Grayskull is the only other one I have. And then I have a couple of minifigures um, that I bought separate, just so I could have them, because I really liked some of them. And we'll look at all those as well. Uh, when we look at Castle Grayskull. So, Castle Grayskull will be a bit of a longer video. Anyways, Point Dread, Panthor, all that kind of stuff. Skeletor is awesome in this set. Zodak is really awesome in this set. Panthor is a lot of fun to have, especially if you have, you know, you got a He-Man he can fight. That's fun. Figures are rather posable. Find it for cheap. That's my only recommendation if you really want the set. Find it for cheap. Do not buy it at full price. You can get it for cheap. Buy this set. If you have to get it at full price, wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Or just buy the parts that you really want separately if you can get them at a good price. Um, I recommend the Skeletor and the Panthor. I recommend Zodak. And there you go. So this is that. Everything for this set. Um, Skeletor. <laughs> I like the Battle Axe, though. Like... You know, Skeletor, who has the Havoc staff normally. Ah, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's it. This set was kind of... At 20 bucks. I had a lot of fun with it. I love... Like, I usually actually have... The Talon Fighter is actually usually not seen in my display. Because I have uh, Castle Grayskull up on top of my uh, shelf where I have all my uh, Sentai stuff. But usually I have Panthor with Skeletor. Sometimes this one, sometimes a regular Skeletor on it. Uh, fighting He-Man in front of Castle Grayskull. And this is nowhere to be seen. He's off in the background usually in my display. And I have the other Sorceress displayed because... Though I actually do like the all-white Sorceress. The classic Sorceress that comes with the uh, Castle Grayskull set. Has a little bit more of a... Um, Place in my heart just because I had the original Sorceress as a kid. Um, I'd never had Zodak or Skeletor, actually. Um, Battle Armor Skeletor. I had the Sorceress. I did not have a white 
Maybe they actually did have a white sorceress, because I kind of remember her. But I had the original as well. Never had Zodak. I had a Panthor. Uh, so some of this set was actually probably nostalgia bones for me, too. Getting the Panthor, getting a Skeletor to fight He-Man. Um, I have three different Skeletors. He is, uh, much like He-Man, he is the first variant that's almost always released for Skeletor. And any tra uh, Transformers, any Masters of the Universe line is usually Battle Armor Skeletor and Battle Armor He-Man as your first variant available. Um, anyways, guys, I'm dragging this thing on. I kind of want to go and play with Skeletor here. And, you know, find He-Man upstairs and, you know, set up a little brrr thing with them. Anyways, so have a good day. Uh, enjoy Friday. Enjoy Wednesday. Enjoy whatever day of the week it is that you find this video. And I'll see you guys around. Thanks for playing. Bye.